Hello and welcome to the Fishing Guide Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Weekman. Pretty special. We're in a store that I've I've been around, I've shopped in, and it's been here for a long time. Larry Agnes is here uh, with Southtown Sporting Goods. Larry, tell them how long you've been around. How long has the store been around? Well, the store's been around since 1989. Wow. We opened in November of 89, day after Thanksgiving. Wow. For the winter, so it's uh, it's an old store, but the business itself was was started in Joplin, Missouri in 1957. Wow. My father started. I had another career. I was with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Right. And then we tired from it and tried something else. So <laughs> that's where we are now. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the history of Larry. You you have a degree, and, and you've actually done some studies on white bass, haven't you? I, we worked. I was with the National Reservoir Research Program. I have a Ph.D. I've studied and and uh, uh, academically, I worked at it. But uh, we we worked on Beaver Lake. Uh, we had stations all over the country on the Missouri River. We had people working in South Carolina. So right. uh, I had a lot of years of experience on reservoir fishery research, yeah. And right. uh, we did a lot with white bass, right. Was that what you specialized in, kind of? Was that your kind of your field of study? Well, my, my field was invertebrates, <laughs> yeah. the insects. But I worked with the group, and as time went on, I became more and more involved in the national part of it, but I had lots of field experience with fish. So, right. uh, and we, we had teams that worked on, the, like there was a group that worked on white bass, a group uh-huh. that worked on black bass, and uh, we, we were the national repository for fishery data from all over the country. Right. So we collected information from the states and massaged it and came up with uh, things of a more of a generic nature than just uh, like state management. We... We were right. really looking at ways to try to enhance production in reservoir fisheries. Wow. That was a long time ago, in the 60s through the 80s. So right. That's ancient history. Well, uh, Beaver Lake uh, was started, uh, they started it, damming it up in 67. Well, it, it began yep. filling, yeah. I, yep. I actually did the pre-inver- pre-impoundment invertebrate oh, really? survey of the reservoir and then followed wow. it through the first year of uh, for my Ph.D., and... Uh, and uh, it was just uh, it was just where I got started, and I stayed with the program. Really, it, it was great, then great you, opportunity. And then you roll into the store. You're well, like, did I, you think, my, what am I getting into? Or no, I, I, it sounds crazy, but as a as a teenager, uh, my father actually started the original Southtown Sporting Goods in Joplin in 1957. Uh huh. And I worked there for about three years before i went off to oh to college and so i left it and my brother ran it but then in 89 when i came back uh, uh we we began a, a we just opened another one the the, the framework was there that right the, the, the south town in joplin was a very successful right business and uh, some people will know so this is but this is an old business too now we're 30 right. years old so we, <laughs> he, we've been here a been- long time and so did you just start with fishing lures or did you start with, did you also have archery too? Or? No, we, we started in, in my father actually started when we, when we opened here, Yeah, we had long since become a full line sporting goods store. We do fishing, hunting, right. clothing, uh, archery, of course, right. uh, kayaks. Uh, That's uh, right. I never sold guns in this store. They sold them in Joplin, right. but I, I never got into it here. I just never found a good gun man. Uh-huh. So, uh, uh, somebody that knew how to trade, but uh, yeah, we're full line sporting goods. Fishing and, is a part of it. It's and tell special. us, it's it's your workers. That's that's actually what makes it special. Besides yourself, but well, and your but, son uh, Brett's here, and so yeah, yeah, we have a we have a, uh, uh, a a good rapport with people. I of course I've had experience on right. reservoirs for years, and I actually wrote articles in the paper here in the nineties, and and. Uh, uh, did that for a while, just volunteered to the paper, but, uh, we've, we've been, uh, we've been at it a long time and, and we do have some expertise and this is, uh, I guess it's kind of a place where you say you kill people with kindness. You come in, you're not going to, you're not going to walk and find something yourself. We're going to help you. Right. And we're going to make it a pleasant experience if we can. That's part of our stick. Right. So, and, and you have plenty of stuff here. Well, it's There's... a, it's a good inventory. Yeah. We, we uh, and we chase new stuff. Uh, right. For example, okay. Uh, we just got this thing. I mean, this goes on all the time. Right. But this is a new Yamamoto bait. One of 
Yeah. What a tournament. And, that's uh, right. So when that happens, you do that's, it. That's like the big one that's shaped like a turd. That's, and people yeah, say that yeah. all the time. Yeah, well, but that's, the, that's you know. it's, a, it's a new stick bait that, right. that's a very heavy bait. So right. you don't have to use the weight. You just use you the just, hook. You just use yep. the hook. And, and so, it, evidently, it, it works a lot like the, the Ned Rig or right. the Creeks. And that's huge for us. Right. Uh, the, Ned, the Ned Rig is uh, in there. We actually call them turd worms. Right. And, yeah. It's... Uh, uh, TRD technology, and That's you know right. what a fisherman's going to do with that pretty quick. But right. uh, they did then, and we do a lot of little things. This is a little crappie bait uh, right. from Yum that uh, some of the some of the uh, live scopers are really liking it. It's, yep, uh, looks like a little minnow, and uh, it's active. You can see it on the scope. So we we're into we've got a broad selection of lures, and and uh, we're members of a buy group. Uh, we got into Sports Inc. years ago. Sports Incorporated is a, is a buying syndicate, so it helps us with our purchasing of product. And uh, that's if you're going to be in business like this, you got to buy, <laughs> right? right? You can't you can't just buy it and sell it wholesale. It's hard. But uh, so we, we we we're we're well we're well set up to run. And so COVID came in, so you actually survived COVID, which uh, is you know maybe some. Some places. Come on dead, by. Don't come on by. But, uh, <laughs> we're right here in well, the yeah, store, people. Yeah, you can people. just watch your stand. There's a cord here. Yeah. And if they have fishing lures, you probably won't see them. They'll be hiding them because they don't want them on the. They don't want to show people what they're using. <laughs> right. right. But, but COVID came through, and and how did that affect your business? How did that change business? Well, it was a, for us. It was the best thing that could have possibly happened. Uh, the government gave people money. And right. sent them home, and and uh, one of the safest places to be was out fishing and, and right. uh, hunting. So we had uh, enormous benefit from it. Uh, right. The, the the kayak business got to a point where, if we got thirty kayaks in, we'd leave fifteen in the lot and sell them the day they came in. Wow. That happened in twenty and twenty one. Right. Now we're returning to normal. Life's going back to to being what it was uh-huh. before. So uh, it's it's just the way it is. Right, and so uh, kayaks, we happen to be in northwest Arkansas. Of course, we're blessed with the Ozark Stream, such as the Kings River. You can even count uh, Crooked Creek, but the oh, Illinois absolutely. is here. And so we have all these the streams. And, and yep. uh, over the line, the Elk River, uh, the James, uh, the enormous, the Illinois just to the west. Right. An enormous selection of uh, streams to float. So uh, kayak stream floating with kayaks is good. And fishermen, actually, uh, there's a whole kayak industry that's... Uh, that's yeah. built up from uh, uh, just just the fact that uh, the the kayaks are really nice. The fishing kayaks, right? Are fun. Let's talk that. about how many kayaks do you normally have? I'm trying to see them. How many kayaks do you normally uh, canoes do you normally have? Well, uh, we, in stock? we'll display fifteen or twenty, but uh, uh-huh. we probably got thirty five, forty in the oh. warehouse now. And we get right. them in periodically. Okay, uh, that that's uh, it's still a good uh, a good business, but right. it's uh, it peaked in the. We had wonderful years in 2021. Yeah. Everybody went to the creeks, so it was a fun time. You know, uh, the one thing I see whenever I come in the store, it's, it has that, that that tackle store feel to it that you guys still put fishing line on. Oh, yes. You know, I mean, it's... it's and, and we sell live bait. You can and you your, sell live bait. Get yep. your minnows, your worms, or your crickets here. We got a corner. Uh, we do that instead of advertising it. It's a money loser if people know right. the truth. But... Uh, it's a it's a it's a great thing for getting people through the door. I never found a way I could spend a thousand dollars and right. get more benefit than I do from from selling the minnows. You have to have terminal tackle. Yeah, well, so. we got that too. We got it all. Uh, so. so the the baits back there, but you um, up up front here, you also have a lot of reels yes. and rods and reels. And so, right. talk about your selection of rods and reels because. Coming from a shop, you would think that you might be more limited, like you wouldn't have as many. Is that because of the buying group that allows you to well, have a better? Uh, plus, option? it's just it's just the way we've uh, we've developed the business. We right. you can find most things you want right now. It's a little difficult, but you know Shimano, Luz, right. Abu Garcia, you name it, Okuma. Uh, same with rod lines. Uh, we most of the major rod lines we keep, uh-huh. and we're a little bit selective on those. We try to keep them uh, hooked up with companies that have been around a while, right? Just for warning. Yeah, <laughs> if something breaks. You, uh-huh. You're going to have to help the customer with it, and uh, so right. that's a big part of 
doing it, and uh, and we and we go through the whole season, uh, you know, for, with fishing. But right. rods and reels are it's a big spring, right? Business. Well, this is also an area in northwest Arkansas where you can go fishing year round. Right, so right, it's not like people just stop fishing when no, football no, it's happens. It's, season, but. Yeah, there might not be as many anglers out there fishing on uh, Razorback uh, weekend. But then they make up for it during the week, don't they? Oh, yes. Well, I'll tell you what. In a uh-huh. college town, which is where we are, right. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we have uh, a football weekend will kill business, literally. Right. <laughs> and if you've got 80,000 people across town at the stadium, you're going to miss some customers there. Right. And that's just part of it. Um, and so football weekends and, and the sports weekends can be kind of hard, but. They still make they, it in, and they, they fish around it. They they come through the weekend, though, don't they? Oh, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> so, absolutely. And we also have Swabco that's nearby, sure. which is a heated lake, right. uh, power plant lake, which uh, stays warm uh, right. all the way through the winter. Limited parking, but uh, it's still, still another. Yeah, another. It's kind, of a, it's kind of different. Right. And it's good winter fishery. But uh, our lakes, we have, we have a great uh, diversity of lakes around us. Uh, Grand Lake. These are all big right. name. Beaver Lake, Table Rock, Bull Shoals are within a two or three hour drive, and right. and uh, even Truman and Stockton. This is Lake Country, and uh, uh, so people they go all directions to fish. Yeah. So, uh, do you have different hours for during the winter or during the summer? No, we we just run eight to six, uh, okay. six days a week. We've all right. we've been a seven day a week uh, business uh, forever, and now we're closing Sundays and trying it. We're going right. to see what the happens that just has to do with finding help to come in on sundays they don't like to work anymore right on sundays so we, we, we're trying it we'll see what happens right but, uh, anyway that's uh, it's kind of a new thing for us have you ever taken a vacation from this store larry oh sure ever no, well, where we, did you go on vacation i went to some meeting either sports day or, or icast <laughs> used to or go to icast <laughs> used to go I to icast you. a lot of I'm in my 80s now, so uh, uh, it's, the traveling is a little more difficult. But uh, right. the, a, a trip to a show was uh, went to Las Vegas a lot. Right, I cast spent many years. You, you're well yeah. aware. Yeah, I cast was good so, in Vegas. I liked it, it there. Was, it was a fun trip. So we did that, and and our buy group meets several times a year. So uh-huh. we 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 did that, and uh, well, we we've taken vacations. I mean, uh, <laughs> several years yeah. ago, we just left and went for a week out through uh, utah and right saw all the parks and uh they, you know it's a great state if you like to to visit national right. parks but uh, well anyway. they they always say that if you own a tackle shop the last thing you get to do is fish so do you get to fish any a uh, very little i uh right both my brothers have places on the on grand lake right and uh but i i haven't fished in a couple of years and i i had a, a great opportunity when i was uh, a teenager, we actually did a TV show. Oh, really? In Joplin, yeah. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm having trouble clearing my throat. But uh, we we actually uh, had a weekly show, and it was uh, it was two rolls of 16 millimeter wow. footage, <laughs> and the game warden and my father right. narrating. But my brothers and I fished, so we had lots of opportunities. People would would uh, yeah, find man. us a spot. And when I was with the uh, Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, we we did quite a bit of work with uh, groups like uh, BASS and the, uh, uh, they had a Bass Research Foundation. That's right. years ago. Right. And, uh, but so we were around fishing all the time. So you did was your sampling with a rod and a reel? <laughs> yeah. Probably. No, no, no. no. <laughs> a little, little more sophisticated than that. More. But, uh, had, to, had to quantify it a little bit. But that one. But I did. I was I was a serious fisherman. Right. I loved yeah. it. I loved it. And the white bass in the spring. Uh, after work, it's ten miles to the upper part right. of Beaver Lake, and and at the time, uh, that was in the '60s, late '60s. That was a, an unbelievable white bass fishery, new reservoir, right? And they they didn't even put a limit on them. They said you can't ever catch them all. Well, as they age, right? They, it's not quite. They're not as abundant as they were, but it was a. That's right. It, it was a phenomenal fishery. Yeah. So if you could give. Um, a uh, guy out there that that wants to go catch white bass, what what would be your tip for catching white bass? Well, it, 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 there are two things you got to remember. One okay. is they're not going to fight a current, so you hunt okay. them in eddies and you hunt them on the bottom. Okay, and and just search and they're and they tend to find little safe spots where there's no current and bunch up. So if you want to go white bass fishing, you want to find something you can bounce. 
on the bottom. I see. Or, or find an eddy. Uh-huh. They, they, they like a dead spot, and they'll stack up. And, and if you catch one, stay with it. If you don't, move. <laughs> right. as, as they spawn and get closer to spawning, right right above or below a riffle, there's always a little cup. Right. Just the way the, 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 the riffle shapes up. Uh-huh. And there's a dead spot there. And, and they're just like if you watch trout, that uh, they'll find quiet. The fish right. all behave the same that way. So you hunt a, hunt a quiet spot. But you okay. find them on the bottom. Right. And and, uh, and and it's Eddie. Is there a certain lure they should use? Oh, there's a lot of lures. A lot of soft plastics are good. Uh-huh. Uh, they throw almost uh, rooster tails, uh, uh, little Rapalas. Uh, I years ago I love to fish a slider, but a lot of the little small uh, crappie type uh, baits will work. But uh, basically it's a, a little spinner or something right. i always like the soft plastics because you can bounce them on the bottom you can come on by you're okay yep. you go ahead no you're good <laughs> uh we got people coming and going we're, oh, we're that's good. trying to hide um uh, anyway uh you know it's uh, it's just kind of what the person wants to use and okay. live bait's real good right a little bit work hard because you put them on uh-huh. the bottom Right. <laughs> That's the trick. There you go. Well, that takes us to uh, Tackle Time. Tackle Time sponsored by Pico Lures. Of course, Larry has Pico Lures at Southtown Sporting Goods, so they're over on the other aisle right here. But if you want, uh, if you want to uh, find some uh, Pico products, you can find them here. They have hard a whole line of hard baits, soft baits. You can find it. They catch all kinds of fish, including white bass, which is uh, some of our favorite right, kind of right. fish. And so you can check them out there. Larry, uh, where are you located at? If people wanted to come and find you, where would they come? Well, at 4603 North College in Fayetteville. It's right square between Fayetteville and Springdale. Okay. Uh, at right. Uh, if you're in Fayetteville, it's uh, just down the hill from the Northwest Arkansas Mall. Okay. And uh, we're on the east side of the road right next to a business called Locomotion Theme Park. So All right. easy to find. There you go. Well, I appreciate it. Well, and uh, like always, I like to end the show, make sure you keep your hooks sharp and your lures in the water. <laughs>